Hey, 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 how's it going? Do it yourselfers. Welcome to the first episode of Getting Our Hands Dirty, working on the fourth generation Prelude project. So today, as promised, we're going to replace the timing belt, the water pump, all the timing belt components, the seals, the camshaft seals, and our valve cover gasket as well. Now, for those of you that are just joining us, we had to remove our valve cover and our upper timing belt cover to try to verify where our coolant leak was coming from. And it, indeed, we were able to verify that it was coming from our water pump. That's why we are here. But as far as how to remove the valve cover and the upper timing belt cover, it's pretty simple. You first have to remove this wiring harness that goes to your alternator. It's attached to your alternator by the way of this connector and a nut at the end of this cable. So you remove those. There's another uh, bolt that, if I remember correctly, was here. You take that out, you get this out of the way. Then you remove the spark plug wires, of course, and then all the nuts and the fasteners that are attaching your valve cover to the top of your cylinder head. And you get that out of the way. Then your upper timing belt cover is in there by the way of two 10 millimeter bolts. You remove those and then you wiggle and grunt and pull. <laughs> no, you just, uh, you know, just uh, move it around and wiggle a little bit and get that upper timing belt out of the way as well. So next we're gonna remove this power steering belt. We're gonna loosen that adjusting nut. We're gonna loosen this nut and then we're gonna unscrew this adjuster and that will give us enough slack and then we can remove this belt. All right, so there's the first one, this upper one. And then we're gonna take this out all the way. Get our power steering pump belts out. And as you can see, most definitely Time to replace this puppy. All right, next we're gonna remove our alternator belt. This is gonna be in a similar fashion. There's one mounting bolt right there. Then on the other side, you have, or underneath, you have uh, the tensioning mechanism locking nut, and then that bolt, this guy right here, that's your tensioner. So we're gonna loosen those and then get that bolt out of the way. All right, first our mounting bolt. Just gonna loosen it. Then the locking nut for the tensioning mechanism for it. We're just going to loosen that and the tensioner itself. And here comes our belt. Same story with this one, as you can see. All right, next we need to get this uh, motor mount out of here. First, we're going to undo that 10 millimeter bolt, attaching this grinding cable to this bracket. Then we'll do undo these two nuts, one on this side. And this other one is actually a bolt on that side. Then we'll undo this, this bolt here and get this Part of it out of here that that mounting bracket that's to the on the cylinder head side i don't think that has to come off but we'll see about that in the future all right so first this grounding cable these guys are super important make sure you make a note of these and know exactly where they go and put them back in now one thing before we remove our mount and mount and it is if you're doing this on the ground if you can help it you should get a Get a car jack under your oil pan put a two by four between it and try to raise and just just slightly raise and support your engine because when you remove that motor mount the the weight of the engine is going to be on the all the all the three mounts they're going to put more pressure on them you could potentially damage them but you know i'm going to be working on a lift this thing is going to be going up and down so there's no point for me to do it but if you can help it try to support the engine all right let's get these nuts out of the way all right next we'll remove the 17 millimeter bolts and get this mount engine mount out of here this is in there pretty tight there's the bolt and here's our motor mount all right next you probably want to remove your old dipstick tube but since all around the oil dipstick tube where it goes into the engine is full of crud i want to first raise the car and try to clean around it and then maybe while it's raised i can also reach from underneath and take one one bolt that's holding it in and then pull it out that way. But if not, we'll just simply lower the car and get it out of the way. Then next, we're gonna raise the car and drain the coolant, remove our uh, crankshaft pulley and go from there. All right, so first we're gonna drain our coolant. There's a valve right at the bottom of your radiator. Loosen that, make sure you crack your uh, radiator cap open. And while that's happening, we're gonna remove our left front wheel. These are 19 millimeter lug nuts. There we go. All right, next we need to get this splash shield out of the way. There's a, probably a plastic fastener that's supposed to go here that's missing on ours. There's gonna be a 10 millimeter bolt holding it on this side and another 10 millimeter bolt right down here. We're gonna get these out and then push and pull and get this out of the way. I'm actually gonna remove a third one while we're at it. This should allow us to 
Yep, that's much better. All right, next we're gonna remove our crank bolts. Let's see. No problemo. All right, next we're gonna remove our harmonic balancer. There's a key in there. Make sure you don't lose it. All right, so here's a look at our lower timing belt cover. There's a bunch of 10 millimeter bolts holding it in. There's uh, our uh, old dipstick tube is right up there. We're gonna clean around that. And then there's also two 10 millimeter bolts up top that we'll remove when we lower the car to remove our old dipstick tube. And then we should be able to get the timing belt cover out. There's one. Then we're gonna get in there with some brake clean, clean around the, our oil dipstick tube. And then we'll remove the bolt that's uh, holding in our oil dipstick tube, remove that, and then there's gonna be another bolt behind it that's holding in the timing belt cover on this side. These things are in real tight spots, but I think with the right extensions and the sockets, or I should say the right extension and socket combination, you can get to them, no problem. So here's the bolt for our oil dipstick tube. And here's our old dipstick tube. Next, we get the other bolt on the other side, and this is gonna be a tough one. There is, its space is really, really tight in here. Yeah, we got it. Well, we dropped it, but we got it. All right, as you can see, we raised the car one more time, but now we should be able to fish this timing belt, lower timing belt cover out of here. There we go. Just make sure you don't lose any of this rubber seal that goes around the circumference of these covers because they're very important to keep, you know, dirt, mud, and crud out. All right, folks, here's a look at the goods. I don't know how much of it I'm gonna be able to get on camera, but this belt is your balancer shaft belt. There's your uh, balancer shaft adjuster. There's a spring that should go there that's missing. Now behind that, there's your timing belt and your timing belt tensioner, and there is a leaking water pump. All right, next we need to set this to top dead center. There's an arrow on this crankshaft gear. We need to set that up and line it up with an arrow that's behind this. And the engine housing, you cannot see it on camera. It's a tiny one, but when you line these two up, you're at top dead center. If the arrow on your camshaft gears that says up, right there, hopefully you guys can see it, is indeed facing up, up and uh, there's also some notches on your camshaft gears, they need to line up exactly with the top of your uh, cylinder head as well. All right, next we'll reinstall our crank bolt and tighten it down, not fully, just a little bit, just enough so that we can turn the crankshaft counterclockwise because this is a counterclockwise turning engine. Then we'll get a ratchet, start turning it counterclockwise and lining up our marks. All right, so we're all lined up here at the crankshaft and we're lined up up top as well. And we got the arrows saying up, facing up, and the two notches that it's gonna be difficult to show you guys, but they're facing exactly each other and they're at the top of the, the hit, uh, cylinder head. All right, next, simply, we're just gonna remove all the, or loosen all the adjusting nuts and bolts, and then remove our belts. First, uh, the balancer belt. Next, the bolt for the adjusting arm. It's actually a nut. All right, so here's our balancer belt. And here's a look at our balancer belt adjuster. Sits in like this. There's a spring that's supposed to be here that's missing on this car, which will set the tension on the balancer belt. But we'll source that out somehow. All right, next we'll remove our crankshaft bolt. And then we'll remove this gear that's for our balancer belt. Slides out pretty easily. Then our timing belt should already be pretty loose. We'll just slide it off its uh, tensioning roller and we should be, emphasis on the word, should be able to just get this out. There we go. There's our timing belt. All right, so since we took the tension off our water pump pulley, which is that guy right there, it has started leaking again. But that one, the water pump is held in by, I believe, four or five 10 millimeter bolts. So we're gonna go ahead and remove those next. There's one, there's bolt number two. And by the way, to make it easier to get to the other bolts, don't forget to, move, to remove your timing belt tensioner roller, which sits in there pretty much like this. Back to removing the water pump bolts. Yep, don't forget to remove this guy as well. This plus four bolts holds in the water pump. This is for the spring, that's for the, the balancer shaft belt adjuster. There we go. 
Here's a look at the culprit. Here's a look at the insides of it. And here's what it sounds like. Pretty rough. And of course, it's got a lot of play in it as well. But unfortunately, this water pump doesn't have a peephole. Corny, corny jokes. Corny, corny jokes. All right, so here's a look at the mating surface for our water pump. As you can see, it needs a good bit of cleaning. It's not a gas, it doesn't have a gasket, it has a rubber seal. So I'm just gonna get a razor scraper and scrape all of that off and clean it as the best I can. So yeah, we're just gonna grab a razor blade and do as much cleaning as we can. And of course, we get some brake clean in there. Again, I apologize for not being able to get a better shot of what I'm doing. Space is super tight. But I'm just getting the bolt started by hand and I'm gonna, of course, uh, running in by my quarter inch ratchet. Torque spec for these is nine foot pounds. All right, so next uh, we're gonna replace the camshaft seals up top. We're not gonna replace the crankshaft seals down here because if these guys don't leak and this one does not, uh, it's best to leave them alone. So we're just gonna lower the car and then replace the camshaft seals. All right, so to replace your camshaft seals, you're gonna have to remove this uh, camshaft gear. This is, of course, held on by that bolt, but since you don't wanna turn this without the timing belt off, you need, to, you need a way of securing the camshaft themselves in place so you can twist that bolt off. Now, this car, on the back end of the camshaft, we have these holes that I'm gonna try to show you. These guys right here, that hole, there's also a corresponding hole in the camshafts and you can put a drill bit, this guy right here, this is a 3 16 but I think a quarter inch would fit as well. You put it through this hole, through the corresponding hole in the camshaft. I have to just light, slightly line this up for this to fit, but then uh, the camshaft will hold in place while you go to turn, a, turn a, that bolt loose and remove it to get to your uh, seals. Another way is to simply put a wrench on here, hold the camshaft in place with one hand twist off that bolt with the other, but you know, or you can do both, you know, put a pin in there or a drill bit in there and hold it. You really don't want this to turn without the timing belt on, of course. So just gonna slightly turn this camshaft to line it up. There. And now we're simply gonna twist off this bolt like that. And these are 12 millimeter bolts. Now the sprocket should, should come off. There we go. Next, we get another drill bit, do the same thing for the other side. There we go. All right, so here's a look at our camshaft seals and they do seem to be leaking a little bit. Next, in order to get to them though, we're gonna have to remove this plastic cover and in order to remove that, we're gonna have to remove our engine mount bracket, this guy right here. But in order to remove that, we need to raise the car back up. So that is one step that I forgot. So if you, got, if you get to this place and you need to replace these camshaft seals, make sure before going working back up here, you remove the bolts for this uh, engine mount bracket from underneath. And this is held in by the way of these 14 millimeter bolts up here. So once we knock them loose, we'll get our ratchet in here and finish them off. This one here is a little bit longer, make a note of that. Now we just have to probably just remove one bolt up top and we should be able to get that out of the way. Talking about this bolt up here, the other two are actually attached to the mount itself. So once we remove that, we should be able to get the whole thing out of the way. Knock it loose. There's that bolt. And here's our mount bracket. And here's a look at the one bolt we need to take out to remove this, this backing cover. There we go. There we go. All right, next you can use a screwdriver or a pick to try to remove this camshaft seal, make sure you keep the pointing end away from your camshaft, of course. And this should come out without much fuss. So get the second seal out of the way as well. All right, so we get some more brake clean and we're gonna do some cleaning where the seals go. All right, next we dab our finger in some engine oil, get some uh, engine oil on the inside of this seal and on the outside, which will help in putting in it easier. Now we'll line up our seal, and with the help of the right size socket, we should be able to easily push this in. You wanna make sure it goes in even, it's not crooked, all that good stuff. Then you wanna feel out around the circumference with your finger. That'll give you a good idea whether one part is sticking out or not. All right, same thing for the other camshaft, but this one's gonna be a little bit trickier because there's not enough space to get our longer socket here and press it in by hand. 
Then we're going to use a pry bar to press it in most of the way. And this is going to be more difficult to put in evenly. So you got to take your time and make sure it goes in completely even. I'm actually going to try to feel these with my bare hands just to make sure it's completely even all the way around and it looks good. All right, next, before we put the camshaft gears back on, we need to reinstall this, uh, this backing plastic cover. This goes in like this. Again, held in by one bolt down here that you guys cannot probably cannot see. Put on our uh, camshaft sprockets and torque them down. Now again, these drill bits will hold these in, uh, in place, but you know, if you wanna be on the safe side, you can just get a, get a wrench and hold the, hold the camshafts in place while you torque them down. Torque spec for these is 27 foot pounds, which is not much, that basically. Now for this other one, I cannot get the torque wrench in there, so we'll just do it by feel. Okay, next we're gonna reinstall our motor mount bracket. We're just gonna put this, uh, this one bolt that goes up top, this guy right here, that you guys cannot probably, cannot see. Just gonna put that in, and then we'll get the rest from the bottom. Now we're not gonna completely tighten this because we still might need to wiggle this down a little bit to line up all the other bolts. So, but we just gotta remember to tighten this or torque this down when we are done with the bottom ones later. And next we'll run in the bolts for the bracket from the bottom. Next we'll tighten up by hand. We don't need to torque these down exactly. Just gonna make sure they're nice and tight, and never come loose. All right, next we're gonna install our timing belt tensioning roller, this guy right here. Now, when you go to install this, you wanna make sure this hole in the back goes over a little pin that's on the engine block, and also this spring hooks in to this hole right here, and then this end will go over a peg that's on the engine block as well. Now, this is the way on this car, the timing belt is tensioned. The spring will set the tension, and then once you lock it down here, that tension is set. But then as the timing belt wears out, you can adjust the timing belt tension by the way of a tensioning mechanism or a tensioning nut that's at the end of this that's sticking out of the timing belt cover. So you don't have to go ahead and remove everything in order to reset the tension of the timing belt. But I'll show you that later. But for now, we're gonna put this on the engine block. Then I'll show you how it sits. Also, in order to set the tension on the lowest position so that there's enough slack so we can put the timing belt on here, See this slot right here? There's a spot right behind it where you can screw in a 10 millimeter bolt that's for one of the timing belt covers into here. So you can set it at this lowest position. So once we set everything up, we're gonna push this down, put that bolt in, screw it in, tighten it in, and this will hold in place. And it'll once we, it's time to put the timing belt on, we can put it on a lot easier. I'll show you guys in a little bit. Let me put this on first. All right, so here's what I'm talking about. There's a spring attached to that pin up there. And there's this bolt in that slot. I've hold down on the tensioner and I've tightened that bolt to hold it in its lowest position so we can put the timing belt on easier. All right, next it's time to put the roller and the tensioning mechanism for our balance shaft belt that this car has. This goes on like this. So yeah, here's a closer look. This is your roller, this is your tensioning mechanism. This bolts into a bracket on the engine block. There's a spring here that will set the tension. Now this spring on this car was missing and we're not gonna worry about it. We're not gonna replace it. We'll go find another one because this balancer belt is not important as, as important as the, as the timing belt, obviously, and it's a smaller belt. We should be able to just easily set the tension by hand once we align all the timing marks, so it's not a problem. So here's how this adjusting mechanism works. The spring would go back here, and as it would press up on it, it would tension the belt. So right now, as it sits in its lowest position, the belt goes around here, on the lower and around that, so this is, would be in the tightest position, but when it's time to install this belt, this is your balancer shaft, this is your balancer shaft belt roller, then there's another sprocket here that will attach to that, that would, uh, the balancer shaft belt would go over. So once it's time to install that, we just pull up on this, put the belt in, and then we'll set the tension by hand, tighten everything, there's a nut here, adjusting nut, we tighten that down, then all the tension is set, and it should be good. And actually, we're gonna loosely tighten this adjusting nut that goes at the end of that pin holding all the tensioning rollers in as well. Comes with a washer, don't lose that washer. Put the washer in first, then run this nut down. All right, next it's time to put in our timing belts. We're gonna start at the crankshaft. Actually, first we're gonna get this up there, get it past the motor mount, rest it on the camshaft, not put it on the camshaft, but get it just about there. Then we'll put the bottom around the crankshaft gear, and then we're gonna start on the non-tension side, which is gonna be on our left side as we stand here face the engine which is the exhaust camshaft. And then we'll put it on the intake camshaft and down and around uh, to the tensioning roller down here. All right, so here's what I'm talking about. Around the crankshaft gear 
And then this is how it looks like looking up top. Next, we're gonna put the, the sprocket for our balancer shaft belt on, and this will help keep the timing belt in place. Now next up top, we need to check our alignment marks. There are alignment marks in the front of the sprockets for the camshafts, but there are also timing marks in the rear, as I'm about to show you. Hopefully you guys can see this notch in the camshaft gear. That notch needs to be at the top of the, exactly at the top of the cylinder head. There's also two notches here that need to face each other Exactly. Now the problem is these camshaft sprockets like to move around as you try to put line up the belt and put them on. So I've got these uh, zip ties here ready. Once I line them up, I'm gonna tighten the zip ties so that will hopefully the belt will stay in place. But we'll still, even though these are in into these pins, we still need to move these sprockets around just a little bit to line them up. This first one will have to go counterclockwise so we can get the slack out of the belt out and put it on right there. If I can just tighten this, uh, this zip tie will be in good shape. There, now that one will stay in place. Hopefully the crankshaft hasn't moved. Let me check. It has not. So we're gonna go to, the, to this other one. Now this one needs to go clockwise just a tad, I think. That's about it. Yep, that's perfect. So we lined it up, put the zip tie in. Now, when we move it into the correct position, you can see the slack go away. Now we check our timing marks. Yep, looks perfect. And again, we let go of this, it moves back a little bit, even with these drill bits still in place. Back in the bottom, here's how things look. We need to get this belt underneath our water pump, which is back here. I don't know if you guys can see. And then from underneath that, over our tensioning roller, which is on behind this roller for our uh, balancer shaft. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna pull on this side, get it on the, under the water pump gear, and then over our roller, and then we should be okay. Hopefully, nothing will move while we do this. I think we got it. Timing mark on the crankshaft still in place, and our timing up top has to be in place because we got zip ties up there. All right, next I'm gonna loosen that 10 millimeter bolt that's holding in our timing bolt tensioner. And by doing that, we apply tension to this side of the belt. So now we can go up top, remove our zip ties, put this bolt back in, rotate the engine, and then check our alignment marks. All right, so here's the alignment marks right up top. As you can see, the one on the right is exactly in place, but the one on the left, our intake camshaft, has moved again. Again, like I said, that camshaft likes to move back. Once you line it up, it moves back just a little bit. So what we're gonna do is actually put the crankshaft bolts back in. And since, again, this is a counterclockwise turning engine, we're gonna uh, just gently Turn the engine just a little bit counterclockwise to take this slack out of here. And then we're gonna remove those drill bits, cut the zip ties, and then rotate the engine two full rotations and check on our alignment marks. So again, just a few degrees just to take the slack out right there. Now we remove these, carefully cut the zip ties. Actually hold it, before we turn the crankshaft to uh, check our timing marks, we need to tighten this bolt down because once we turn this, once we start turning this counterclockwise, more of the slack will go to this side. And then we need to adjust the tension to take off that slack. That, that spring doesn't do it automatically on its own. We need to uh, do it with in combination with this nut. I know it's a little confusing, but that's the way it works. So first you want to tighten this adjusting nut here. This will hold whatever, uh, this will uh, hold whatever tension is on the belt. And then we're gonna rotate this just about like, you know, just a quarter of a turn, again, counterclockwise. So just about that, that's enough. And then we'll loosen this adjusting nut and this will allow the spring to take out more of the slack on this side. You might even see it move. Yep, it's moving up. You guys see it? So now it removed more of the slack from the belt. Now we tighten it. Back down. So now we'll continue turning this full, two full rotations and check our timing marks. And here's our timing marks up top. Now you can see on both camshafts, they're facing each other exactly, exactly on top of the cylinder head. So we're in good shape. All right, so after making sure our timing belt is on correctly, it's time to install our balancer shaft belt. Now, as this sits on the bottom, there's your balancer shaft on this side, there's your balancer shaft roller on this side, and there's the sprocket that's on the crankshaft that will turn this belt and your balancer shaft. 
Now there are timing marks on the roller and the balancer itself that need to line up before you can put this on. The timing marks on the, on the roller, I'm gonna show you from up top. So hopefully you can see this. There's a timing mark on the shaft of this roller and then there's a mark on the engine block as well. So you need to line that up. And here's the look from the bottom. That's the one we just lined up. Here's your balancer shaft. Now this one, if I'm not mistaken, this notch here on this gear needs to line up with that mark that's on the block like this but there's also an access hole here where there's a bolt in that you can remove that bolt and put in a long uh, screw or a drill bit in our case to make sure this locks in place. So we're gonna do that. All right, so here's a look from the bottom. This is the bolt that you need to remove, 12 millimeter socket. All right, so after you remove this bolt, what you need to do is to get a six millimeter by 100 millimeter long bolt. And then you wanna mark that at three inches. I've marked this by some black electrical tape that you guys may not be able to see. And then you want to insert this in this hole and then at the same time, twist this uh, balancer shaft and get to where you can insert it up to that point. Now we got this just past three inches, but then once you turn this, this, this needs to be super tight. As you can see, this is not it. So we're not in the correct position right now. So we need to keep turning this. So keep turning, keep trying to insert this drill bit. Once you get it exactly in the right position, like just right now, I've got it exactly at three inches inside of the block. And when I go to twist this, I can just barely move it. I definitely cannot turn it. So we're in the good, we're in the correct spot right now. So now we can put on our belt. All right, so once more, we need to loosen this adjusting nut. All right, next it's time to put in our belt. First, we're gonna put it around our crankshaft, the sprocket for this belt around the crankshaft, then that roller, then under this tensioner, which is pushed up all the way to give us enough slack. And then around this guy, and that should hopefully do it. All right, now to properly tension this belt, we're gonna get our ratchet on this adjusting nut. Before we tighten it, we're gonna press down on this. No need to press down super hard. This doesn't need a whole lot of tension, but then we'll just tighten this bolt. Ah, but now we need to readjust the tension on our timing belt. What we could have done is to retighten that 10 millimeter bolt to hold the tension in exactly the same location that it was uh, for the timing belt before we went and uh, loosened this bolt to try to install our balancer shaft belt. But anyway, it doesn't matter much. We need to turn this about a quarter of a turn and we can't because we still have this drill bit in the balancer shaft. So let's get that out of the way. So now we're gonna turn it. Now we loosen this adjusting nut once more, applying pressure just to the tensioner for the balancer shaft belt. We will tighten this adjusting nut. All right, once more, we'll turn the engine to full rotations. Check on timing marks on our balancer shaft. Yep, bit of a pain. All right, so there's a the timing mark on our balancer shaft pulley in the correct spot. And the timing marks on our camshafts are in the correct spot as well. All right, before I forget, I'm gonna tighten this uh, 14 millimeter bolts for this upper motor mount bracket. All right, once again, we come down here, we're gonna put this bolt back into this access hole, tighten that down, and then make sure we remove this 10 millimeter bolts we had here on our uh, timing belt adjuster. All right, next it's time to put this lower timing bolts back on, but I'm actually gonna make another trip to the store to get a spring for the tensioner for this uh, balancer shaft belt because like I talked about, you can adjust the timing belt tension in the future by the way of this adjusting nut. That adjusting nut will stick out of the lower timing belt cover here and then you can you know, set the engine atop that center, loosen it, basically what we just did, you know, move the crankshaft, retighten it. But since we don't have the spring on the adjuster for the balancer shaft belt, once you loosen this with this cover on, that balancer shaft adjuster, tensioner adjuster will come completely loose and then, you know, your timing belt is gonna be tight, but that balancer shaft is gonna be super loose. You know, it might be loose enough where you can damage that belt, or at the very least, you're gonna have a lot of vibration once you, you know, loosen and adjust the tension on the timing belt. So it's just not fair. I'm gonna make it run to the store, get a spring, any spring. I'm not gonna get the factory spring. We'll just stick it on there, so it'll apply some tension to that belt. So yeah, this spring for the balancer shaft adjuster doesn't matter as much, but if you're missing the spring for the timing belt adjuster, make sure you get the factory one. All right, back from the store, got ourselves a new spring, this time from Lowe's. Put it in here, had to stretch it a little bit to fit this space, but then I uh, went ahead and readjusted the tension on both the timing belts and this belt again, 
And as you can see, this is tight, but not too tight. So this is about the right amount of tension here. Same goes for the timing belt. So next, we're just gonna tighten this bolt. Now we'll remove our crank bolt. And then we'll reinstall our lower timing belt cover. It's gonna require full bolts, as you may remember. There's also a seal that goes around you're adjusting that. Okay, next we're gonna reinstall our harmonic balancer. All right, so if you wanna to torque this down to the manufacturer torque specification, which is 159 foot-pounds, you'll need this tool. You I mean, you can always just use your impact and tighten down as much as you can, but again, that's not the correct specifications for these. And this might be important because you don't wanna to over-torque them and you certainly don't wanna under-torque them. You, know, you can get this tool if you have a manual, you can uh, you know, put the car in gear, you can do it on the ground, make sure the wheels can't move and then try to torque it down. You can do all of that, have someone maybe uh, in the car step on the brakes as well. But if you get this tool, this life, life is gonna be a lot easier. And it's basically the setup you want. You want your pry bar on the tool, holding the harmonic balancer and crankshaft in place. And you want your uh, torque wrench on the bolt, obviously. You wanna hope then you wanna twist that till you get the click at 160 foot pounds. All right, let's see if we can do this without busting our knuckles. There we go. All right, next we wanna install our oil dipstick tube. Goes without saying, get a new washer, clean the area before you put it in, all that good stuff. Next, we use the old classic paper towel in the socket to hold the bolt in place, move to put its bolt in. All right, before we put our valve cover on, now we're gonna replace our camshaft cap. This guy right here, this goes at the end of the intake camshaft at this last bearing cap. So we're going to remove these four bolts, take that out and put this in there. Might need a small pick or a screwdriver to pry this open or pry this loose. Here's the cap in question. So we get that out of the way. Clean the gunk away from the engine of course. Get some clean engine oil on our finger and put it on the mating surface of the new cap. And then we'll slide that in, make sure it's completely seated. Now we'll put the cap back on, run the bolts back in and then torque them down. Torque spec for these, seven foot pounds. All right, next we'll clean the mating surface with some rags and brake clean. Making sure we specially get rid of all the old RTV silicone that might be on here. Next we'll remove these old seals here. Next is time for some RTV. And of course we're not gonna put this everywhere, we're just gonna put this on the corners of the caps to the top of the cylinder head where they meet. And we might do a very, very thin amount on the caps as well. We're gonna do these on these two up here and those two in the back as well. All right, so here's a closer shot. You want it in the corners here, thin amount up top. Then on this corner, same goes for that cap and those two caps as well. All right, next we'll install our valve cover with the gasket in it. You should have this, of course, ready before you start putting the RTV silicone in. Next, we'll torque these down to seven foot pounds. You don't have to torque them down exactly. You know, you can just hand tighten them, but since I got my torque wrench ready, I'm just gonna torque these down. All right, so next we're gonna put on our spark plugs, our motor mounts, the grounding cable, start the car, see whether it runs. If it runs, we're in the money. Next, it's time to install our motor mount. First, we'll put this guy in. All right, next we need to raise and support the engine just a little bit so that we can line up the holes for our motor mount and put the bolts and the nut back in. All right, so I'm actually not gonna bother with putting the belts back on. I'm not even gonna put coolant back into the system. Uh, I'm just gonna reconnect the cable for the battery, get in the car, start the car for three, four seconds tops, make sure it runs smooth and everything is okay. So yeah, we're gonna wrap this video up, but stay tuned for the next episode of fixing stuff with the fourth generation Prelude. And actually, next, after the Prelude, we're gonna get the Shagwar in here. This guy over here, we're collecting dust. We're gonna put that on the lift and then go over all the things that are wrong with that car, try to see what we're gonna fix, what we're not gonna fix, how much we can sell that car, in what condition, you know, come up with a plan and all that. So if you're interested in either one of these cars or any other type of automotive repair video, make sure you stay tuned, subscribe, hit the bell notification, give this video a thumbs up, Check out my other videos that are gonna be on this side of the screen, suggestion box, description box, all that will work as well. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.